Hello Internet, so nice to see you. So you guys have asked a lot of questions in the comment on my videos, so today I'm gonna answer your questions. Let's go. Do you have like an outline for your videos? Like where to start and go to? If not, it's okay. I appreciate your work so truly much. I have better than outlines. I have playlists. Now, you have to click on the channel name, Music Theory for Guitar, just under this video, click on the channel name and you go on my channel page and then click on playlist. If you are just starting music theory or you find any of those um, videos that you've seen here confusing, I have a playlist called Music from Zero that teaches you everything that you have to know starting from absolute scratch. And even if you know something already about music theory, I would recommend you go to the playlist anyway, because there are a lot of little details that book don't tell you or other people just don't tell you, pass under silence, etc. So you guys can actually make sure you have no holes in your understanding. And then I have several more playlists depending on the topic. So yes, there are outlines and yes, I totally recommend you guys go and check the playlist. I noticed you substituted the E minor chord with the G major in one of your examples. Was that because of the relationship within the G major scale? For example, E Aeolian? I find myself doing that sort of thing all the time. That is a great question. And yes, we could think about this answer inside the relationship in a scale, but there is, a, there is actually an easier answer to that. Let's see the G major chord and the E minor chord. So the G major chord contains the notes G, B and D. The E minor chord contains the note E, G and B. As you see, those two chords have two notes in common out of three. So here's the thing, wherever you play a G major chord, you can be sure that the E minor chord will sound similar. Now, this doesn't mean that for a hundred, it's a, this is not a hundred percent guarantee that wherever you play G major, you can play E minor instead. But it's a strong indication that it probably will, okay? So again, not a 100% guarantee, but it's something definitely worth to try. Now, every time you have this kind of relationship, so you have chords that have one or two or more notes in common, depending, because sometimes you have chords that have four notes and they have three notes in common, it's worth to try and substitute it. Some of them will sound completely horrible in that context, in that song, in that chord progression, no problem, but some of them will sound good, okay? Uh, of course, that's not the whole story. We can also go and see all the relationship inside the scale. We can see uh, other things that happen. And after a while, you also get a sense of this kind of substitution. Uh, in my course, Complete Chord Mastery, I work a lot on substitution and I show you different kinds of ways to go through it. And in any chord progression, you can always take every chord of the chord progression and substitute multiple chords to for each of those chords. So if you're interested in that, I would suggest to check out my course, Complete Chord Mastery. Is it just me who can't make a V-shape as shown in the thumbnail? Uh, no, it's not just you. It's something that is actually completely normal, okay? Some people can do this naturally, can do this kind of V-shape naturally, and some people cannot. It's actually interesting because if you, uh, this, can, this of course is the Vulcan salute from uh, um, uh, Star Trek, okay? And the interesting thing is that only the actor playing Spock, Leonard Nimoy, was able to do this. All the other actors of, of the original series were hiding their hands off, uh, under the camera, doing this manually and then raising their hand with the, with the hand uh, already in the shape because they were not able to do this. So, no, you are not the only one. Even William Shatner, even Captain Kirk could not do it, okay? I think you know, you're in pretty good company here. But here's the thing, I could not do it either, okay? I, uh, I learned to do this when I was learning to play guitar and just realized that uh, if I relaxed my hand, if I relaxed my fingers, I get way more mobility on all my fingers. So, of course, these, come, these questions come from the, a video I made on the independence of the left hand. If you go there and do a few of those exercises and take extra care of doing them slowly, slowly, and with uh, relaxation, so try to gently move your fingers, don't force your finger, just convince them to move that way slowly, okay? You see that this is actually not as hard as it seems. Long live and prosper. What's a sharp and flat mean? So in music, we have seven notes, right? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. 
A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But, and then again an A. But those notes are not all at the same distance with each other, okay? If you look at those notes, for instance, on the neck of your guitar, or if you, if you just hear them, you know that between A and B there is another note, between C and E there is another note, between B and E there's another one, here's another one, here's another one. B and C and E and F are already close by. And uh, any, any movement in this is one fret on your guitar. So if you can play the A note on a specific fret, on the next fret you find this note here, on the next fret you find the B, on the next fret you find the C, and on the next fret you find this note here. This note here can get two names. One is A sharp, okay, that's not a hashtag, that's a sharp, okay, and which means one half step, this thing is called a half step, one half step higher than A, or it can be called a B flat, which means one half step lower than B. Okay, and all the naming of all those other notes, it's consistent. So this note here can be called C sharp or D flat. Again, it's one half step higher than C or one half step lower than D. This note here can be D sharp or E flat. This note here can be F sharp or G flat. This note here can be G sharp or A flat. Now, of course, you can ask me what's gonna happen here. A uh, B sharp, is precisely equal to C. At least this happens if we are in the 12 tone equal temperament. If you use other temperament, micro tuning, etc., you're on your own there because everything can happen. But B sharp conventionally is equal C, C flat conventionally is just B, okay? Because again, B sharp would be one half step above B, which is just C, okay? We rarely use B sharp and C flat, though it happens every now and then that we use it. Same deal for E and F. So sharps and flat are just things that tell you to play something slightly higher or slightly lower. Hey, screw all that music stuff. How do you sync your voice to the sped up video whiteboard? Oh, that's a good question. I don't sync the voice track to the video. I first record the voice track and then I sync the video to the voice track. It's much easier. Love your accent. Where are you from? This seems to be a very common question, so let's answer it once and for all. No, I'm not Russian. No, I'm not from the Middle East. I am Italian. I, if, it's, if this sounds like a strange Italian accent to you, it's because of two factors. First of all, because I come from North Italy, not, like, not from South Italy like most of the Italian accent you hear in movies. So my accent is slightly different than what you are accustomed to from uh, Hollywood movies, okay. I come from uh, the area around Venice, so just, in just, just in case you want to know. And factor number two is because I've been living in Canada for nearly 15 years now, so I uh, absorb a little bit of the West Canadian accent. So I, that's why it's probably hard for you to um, place exactly my accent.